Masechta Shabbos, Shabbos 28. Gufa. We're going to deal with something in detail, that which we mentioned in the passage. Boy, Rabbi Lazar. Or behemoth to me a mau, she tame tumas oyalu. The leather of an of a non-kosher, the, the skin of a non-kosher animal. Will it be metame tumas oya, like we learned yesterday, that if you put uh, uh, a tent of pishton over a mace, that the tent of pishton is metame. What about the leather, the, the ore, the, the, the skin, the hide of a non-kosher animal? What really is at the heart of that question? The I read a pasuk yesterday that that the 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 mixe that was placed over the mishkan was made in part by the skin of a tachash. So the question really is going to the heart of the matter is, was the tachash a kosher animal or a non-kosher animal? Omer of Yosef, my boy, that's not a question. Kanina, lo hukshu lelecha shamayim el or behem a Torah bulvad. That things that were, are made for covered shamayim, which the Gemara has a habit that the Mishkan is part of that, has to be from a kosher animal. However, mostly from Vava, from you know, there are actually two coverings. Uh, rams that had like a reddish color. And one was made of the skin of this tachash, whatever that is. And Rav Nechemi Oimer mixe echad haya. No, it, it was wove, it was put together. The dome came in tola ilan. And it looked like an animal that's called the Tola Elon. Rashi says it's a non kosher animal. And it's spotted. Numerous begavonim. It's a beautiful spotted animal. And the Tola Elon Tomehu. And the Tola Elon is like a cat. It like eats mice and rats. So it's, and it's a non, it's like a cat. It's, it's not a kosher animal. How can you tell me that? Everything that was made for the Mishka is comes from Orbe Matmeya, comes from Orbe Matahora. Here we have a, a, a Raya that's in that the Tachash is something uh, that's not Torah. It's Kimin Tala It wasn't from the Tala It looks like a Tala in Shiesh Bogvani Marvi, but in a Chanami, the Lola But it wasn't, it's not the skin of that animal. Our Tachash. And for the Gemara was a Torah, and we have no riot from there. It just looked like it. I'm Rav Yosef Yachi. Ernie, Ernie. I did the Metatan. Yes. I, I have a picture. I don't know if I can show it on the thing, but yeah, the picture of what the Tachash, what it looked like. Can anybody here, see here. it? What? Well, if one is red. red no, thing. show it. Raise what it was higher. it? That red thing? Is it red? No, the red yeah. thing is the Ailima Adami. It's, the, it's what's it below. Walter, raise it a little higher. Yeah. Oh, the so thing what with the yellow say? stripe? Yeah. Yeah, like it's a red, because... So does, do they, okay, we'll see that the, they, this, the researchers don't know exactly what it, what it is. The, the researchers that, you know, today do Talmudic research in various animals, there's a, there's a debate as to exactly what the tachash is. Does the uh, does the Koran Talmud give an idea of what do they give some? Do they weigh no, in or do they not weigh no, in? No, no. This is from this is called the book that I, that I have. It's called the Tabernacle. This has it. Sorry. So it has this, and then it gives the next page. It uh, shows you exactly what was on top. Sorry. And this was a, this was all the woven stuff on top of it. Yeah, this is what it looked like. There was right. on top of, top of it. Right. It's a nice picture. Yeah, so okay. that, this is the book of that. It's not from Corinth. 
So Ihachi Hainadim at Karmiga and Sasgona, that's why in, in Aramaic, the Tachash is called the Sasgona Shashas Bikvon and Hardy was happy having many coats. Okay. So Rova Omar, Rova says, or the He actually says that the height of a non kosher animal is metame, and he learns it out from the following brisa. The tanya. It says in the pasuk in Vayikra by Tumas Megoy. It says So we like we learned yesterday. It could be beget pishtim or beget summer, or it could be the warp and the wolf, just the thread. It says all or or hide, all b'chom leches or. So what is this all b'chom leches or coming to add? Reba or behema tmei. It comes to include in the din of tuma that even the hide of a non-kosher animal can be, can be metam. However, b'shalaka b'yad koyen. So normally, when in order to establish whether a nega has a din of tzaras or not, the koyen comes and inspects it. And he says, sometimes he'll, he'll say, we got to wait seven days. That's called a musgur. He sort of puts it in quarantine for seven days and he checks it seven days later. Or sometimes he'll say, no, it's tame mukhla. It's vada tam. But let's say you gave the, the, the leather to the koyen to inspect, and when he looked at it initially, it didn't have a, a nega. But in his hands, like a week, few days later, it got a nega. That's called loka biyad koyen. Or kotsis mi kulavasa chasmehen. Or for example, let's say a person made a combination garment from pishtim, tsemer, or that's called kotsis mi kulavasa achas mina. And how do we know that these things are metame as well? We learn it out from all b'chom lachas or. So Rava has a raya where that, that, that or behemoth tmeya can become tame from this pasuk. But we could ask Akasha, where is the pasuk that we just learned it from, from the Goy? And we want to say, we're asking the question about Thomas mates, right? That if a garment is placed over a corpse, like a tent, does that garment be become tame the Thomas oy? Rava wants to say yes. However, you're learning out from the goy. Shasi be'erev is not even a garment. It's just a warp and a wolf. One thread this way, one thread that way. And that's a special chumma by the goy. You can't learn it out to Thomas the goy, uh, Thomas Mays. And for the Gemara, the Gemara is Shrodzi. The Rava says, no, I learned it out from a different place, from the din of Shrodzi. Where it also says, the, here's the pasuk by Shrotzi. The asher lav mehem. If the sheretz falls on it on anything bimosam when they're dead, yitame they call kliates, whether it's a wooden kli, o beged, a garment, o or, or hide, o sak. Called Kli Asher Yasem Lacha Bohem. That's the pasuk. So the Tanya or Eli Ella or Beim Etohoyva. That I would know that only a hide because the pasuk just said or. So a hide that has sheretz falls on becomes tummy. What about an or Beim Etmei Aminayim? What about a donkey skin or a horse skin or a leopard skin or a tiger skin or any kind of animal tmei that you use that you that people have uh, rugs made out of uh, leopard. Or, Tiger or whatever, and a sheretz falls on it. Does it become tummy? Talmud Lana, O or. Rabbi wants to say from this O or we can learn it. Freight the Gemara vehicle of Mifrach. Just we asked the just like we asked the Kasha by Nagoyim, we could say Malish Rotsim she came to Tanim Bekadosha. So, gentlemen, Tumas Mace is only Metame you because Ice, but Tumas Sheretz. Is even lo- as long as you have a lentil bean, an abdosha size piece of the sheretz already metamid. 
So you have, you try to bring a raya from the guy, you tr and you broke it. And you tried to bring a raya from Shrotsim and you broke it. But now we're going to use a common denominator. Because the Gemara first starts, Nagoyim Yochichu. So we'll go back to Nagoyim. Saras, Chazra, Din, Lori, Zekri, Zev, Lori, Zekri, Zev. From each individual case, you can't learn it. But what's the common denominator? At Sada that watch, or Tame Bahem. We proved in both cases there's a reboy that even though the animal, the or comes from an, a, a Tome Dika animal, it has Tuma. The Asa, or Bahemetmeka, or Bahemetahora. Right, you, you gave it the same din as a kosher animal's or So I will bring in the third type of tumor that we're trying to learn to. We have tsaras, we have sheras. From each individual case, we couldn't learn it because we had ikla mifrach, either ka'adasha or the other one was because of, uh, of uh, we said ikla mifrach, shasi ve'erim is tamibahem which doesn't work like, but the combination of the two, you can't ask me a kasha. So Rava has a proof now that if you place over a course the high of the behemoth tmeya, that it will become tome as well. Now, up until now, we've been talking about regular Rava, Abai and Rava, right? That's from, that's from the year 250 CE. But now, who was, who was the one who concluded editing the Talmud? That was Ravina and Ravashi, almost in the year 400 CE. So, Amalei Rava mi Barnish le Ravashi. A different Rava, Rava 200 years later, who came from Barnish, who said, you know what? See, many, so this limud of Rava hung around for 200 years, and no one disputed it. Now, when they, it wasn't just Rav Labarnish to Ravashi. Ravashi now gathered, his job was gathering all the material, all the yeshivas and Pupatisa and Sura and Nardoi. Think about it like an art scroll project, that they went back over the last 200 years and they gathered all the Amaroic statements, and they, so they had this statement hanging around and nobody had asked Akash on this Tzara Shavash I'm not saying it could be that he found Rav Barnish, he found this Ikla Mifrech. Rav Barnish had an Ikla Mifrech. Malat Tzara Shavash, even for the common denominator, she came to man be pochus me kazayas. Sometimes Tumas Negoim are also pochus me kazayas. As Tomi Rameshe, never thought I love kazayas. You never have an example of Tumas Mesa, it's less than kazayas. So with that, we rejected this common denominator limud of Rava to teach me that or behemoth me is matami v'tumasoya. Hello, I'm a Rava mi Barnish. So Rava mi Barnish not only broke the limud, he has his own source. Also, the See, the previous method that was attempted is a binyanav. A binyanav is you see the halach in one place, like by Sheretz. You learn it to someone else. It's a simple binyan now. Then, but when you, if you have shnei dvarim, a malamdim. Like, think about the Yud Gimel Midos Shator and the Ben that we say every morning, Rabbi Shmuel. So a binyan av is one halach. But if you have two halachas, a malamdim. Until you get the third, So this, that's, this is a real, these are real dinim. So, Rav Avivanish says, we don't need a binyanav. Binyanav I can break through the way he broke it. Asi b'kav ha'choymer mi nutza shalizim. Nutza shalizim is goat hair. And goat hair was used for the mixer. She'ein metame b'negoyim. Normally, it's not metame b'negoyim, but metame b'olamei, because since the nutza shalizim was used as part of the the mixer over the all, we know that that is metame. Or be emet tmeish and metame be negoyim. We already proved from those other psukim that an, the regular negoyim can occur in a or be emet tmeish. Ain't a din shem metame be olamets. So Rabbi Meirdish has a kavachoymer comes out with the same halacha that an or be emet tmeish is metame or olamets. 
But we don't learn it out from a binyanab, we learn it out from a kabbal fight. Okay. So, El Hadatani Rav Yosef. So, it comes out, we now have proven, it seems, that there's no, that, that the Tachash could be a behemoth Tmeya. Because even a behemoth Tmeya is Matamis, but Tumas Mace, which is what we learned from Tumas Oya. Well, what about that which Rav Yosef taught us a few minutes ago? What about the principle that we said? that uh, everything that's from Lecha Shemayim has to be from Avei Matoyim. What To what halacha? Maybe it wasn't referring to the Mishka. Lamai Hilchaso L'tfilin. That tfilin has to be made from a or Behei Matoyim. Like our tfilin is made from a cow. Tfilin? You can't, there's no, we don't need the statement of Rav Yosef of Lo Huch Shemayim Lecha Shemayim or Behei Matoyim to teach me the din of tfilin. Badexibu. It's written by Farish. It says by Tfilin. Leman Torah Hashem Beficha. What's the point of Tfilin? So you should always have the Torah in your mouth. And we learn a drosha. It means you can make Tfilin only from something that you can eat. That's kosher. Now, when we say the word Tfilin, we're talking about the parchment. We're talking about the parchment, that the parchment has to be made from an amut b'fich. So the Gemara says, El lo oira. So we're not talking about the parchment. We're talking about the batim that you put the parchment in. Frek the Gemara, Rav Omer, Rabbi Yishin, Shal Tfilin Aloch Lomos Mishinai. Right, we have a shin boiling, right? On our Tfilin Shal Rosh, we have a shin that sticks out. No, it sticks out. And the din that it has to be, it has to stick out. And it has to be from a kosher animal is a halach l'mosh misinai. So the, the statement of Tani Rav Yosef, this can't be referencing that. Because right. when we, when, when the, when the batim are sown, we use sinews and gid, and, and gidim that are made from a kosher animal. That's what perhaps when it says <laughs> means when we're going to sew the batim, we have to sew it with strings made from kosher animals. We don't need Rav Yosef to tell me that because we have another Alok Lomash Misina. Tanya, Tfilin Marubos, Alok Lomash The fact that our Tfilin have to be square and not round or triangular, right? Tfilin could have been many shapes. The fact that it's Square halach l'mosh misina, and the din that nichrachos b'sa'ara v'nit paris begidden has to be from bei matoyra is also halach l'mosh misina. So we back to the problem when Rav Yosef said lo hokshu v'lechos shemayim lo arbei matoyra. What was he referring to? Ela lo ritzuos. We're talking about the ritzuos that you might think that maybe that doesn't have to be from a culture animal. Says Rav Yosef has to be from a culture animal. The fact that they have to be black and from a kosher animal is also halach l'mosh misina. But nihi the gemir is shchayrot. So I wish gemir. So Morris says no, no. There it only said from halach l'mosh misina. Told us that to be black, but it didn't necessarily have to. Say, that had to be from a kosher high. Could have been from a kodan. So we needed Rabbi Yosei to tell me this halach shul lech shemayim al orbe to Rabbi Vad to teach me that the ritzuos of tefillin have to come from a kosher animal. And by the way, the, the, these all are dinim that are brought down la halacha, that the shin has to be boiling, that the tefillin has to be square. In the source command? Yeah, this from Shulchan Aruch, Aruch Chaim Lamed Beis. That's all the dinim of tefillin. Then there's a Lamed Tess, No, that has to be that has to be woven with the Sinus. with kosher sinews. Also, aloch l'mosh Sinai. By the way, there's a minute that you stick a little bit out. Take a look at your batim. A little hair sticks out, and the, it's also brought al pi minig ish mokam esuyim bo motzim etasaar. The Bahir Haytef says 
You have to stick it out a little bit in the body. Yeah, but the, the hair and the sinews are different. No, no, it's the same. The same? same. The it's hair, the without the hair. The end of the sinew. Yeah, the sinew out. there, that which they use to sew the body. Okay. We never resolved the issue of what was the tachash. No, no, the, there is a difference. The hair inside, the hair is the thing that 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 ties the, the inside yeah. the inside. It says like this. The Called sinews are the ones that are that you tie the whole the whole. There's two. There's difference between the yeah. hair and the sinews. I'm going to tell you. Mm -hmm. Called parsha me parshiel sat fillin, korcha v'koishra beklav kot, va'alav koishrim saar v'hematoy. So yes, the parchments are also so, sewn with the hair of v'hematoy. Saar zet sarich sheira michutz labay sat fillin. Va'apiyaminig yesh mokam esliim bomotzim esasar. That's the, that's the only Allah I said. That the, the hair that was used to sew the parchments together, that same hair, is brought out to the body. That's all. Now, comes out that when Rav Yosef said, look, because we tried to reject that the Tachash could be a Tomei animal, because Rav Yosef had said, now we learn that that statement had nothing to do with the Mishka. So now we're back to the question, my havi Allah, what about, what is the, what is the tachash? The tachash, I have Moshe, what is it? Om Rabbi Lo, Om Rabbi Shemim, Ben Lakish, Om Rabbi Meir, tachash, I have Moshe, bear with the It was not a behema, and it was not a chayo. It was a third species. It didn't, they didn't know what kind of chayo it was, they didn't know what kind of behema it is, and was a unicorn. Or let's say it had one horn coming out of its forehead. In fact, this animal only appeared at the time of Moshe Rabbeinu, at the time that they made the Mishkan. And this animal was put away by Hashem, and, and we never, we've, the, Nature does not have it in nature anymore. That's what Chazal said. Now the Gemara wants me to come and care. Nachas I sell a If you're going to tell me that it had a, a horn in its forehead, Shmami not Torah. I prove to you that it must be kosher. Dom Rav Yehuda, Shor Shehikriv Adam Arishon. Care Nachas I sell a bimitzchol. That Adam Arishon. When he, he sacrificed the first Corbin, it was an ox that had a horn in the middle of its forehead. That's Makrin Mafris. So the Gemara says, what do you mean one? Makrin Tarti That seems to be mean two. but We read it Makrin, but it's written it, it's written Karen. And which means only one. So Valisha Minate Bin Behemo. Okay, so you have a riot, and maybe it's a behem. Oh, so if you're gonna compare it to the shore, then we you you said it's a tor animal, but I'll say even more. Maybe it's a proof that it's a we had a chachamim had a question, is it a behem or a chaya? Well, if you're gonna compare it to the shore, then it's a min behemo. No, because keeping the ikka keresh the min chayahu. There's another animal called a keresh which we don't know what that is, which is a chayah. They knew it was a chayah, but not a, it was undomesticated. And also, the left slay, Elachel Chadakir, only had one horn. So, Iklamem min chayahu. So that's why the Chachamim were mesupik, whether it was behema or a chayah, because they had one raya by the shore, maybe it's a behema. They had a raya, there is a chayah as well, that has a one horn, so they, what, which one is it? So that's why they were Mesopic, which one it is. Ernie, we're talking about Tachash, right? No, yet we started talking about the Tachash, but then we, we wanted to say, if now, if it had one horn, let's compare it to a short, to the shore that Adam Arishon was mockery, but also had one horn. So maybe, so let's prove from here it's a behemoth. So the Gemara says, no, there's another animal called a Keresh, which was a Chaya, and it had one horn. So, so what did we say? 
What did we they say? They don't know. Tachash. We don't so know what the Tachash is. So the, they say that, just to let you know, Schwanzel says the Tachash, the identity of the Tachash is a matter of great controversy, never, never resolved. Some authorities explain that the Tachash is a monodon or narwhal, a species of a whale. Narwhals, Carol, they, they, they called it a whale. Traveling it's called smoke. a chad, right, it's called a chad shame. Right. Yeah. A narwhal has one long Long tusk. Tick. Yeah. Right. Twisted tooth, right? The narwhal appearance totally parallel the description here. Yeah, it's spotted like a teleyalion compared to the description in the Gomorrah. It has a single horn on its forehead and the sages were unable to, to, to determine its precise nature. Domestic or non-domesticated, kosher or non-kosher. And maybe they got it. And when they crossed the Yamsuf, they certainly had, I mean, they had an, uh, an ocean, an ocean yeah, living they, animal because they it, were near the sea. It's in the northern ocean waters. So I, I'm not sure. I don't know. Okay. Well, but if they, if they used it to build the Mishkan, then the question is, how did they get it? Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe they, maybe a trader had traded it with them. Oh, Mish. See the You made a, you made a wick out of a shmata from a garment. Shekip lo You folded it up, right, to make it small, like to be a wick. But you didn't singe it. You know, to, to make a, a wick light better, you light it and you put it out. So you singe it. So, but they didn't singe it. Epsilos, I beg you, that they folded but didn't singe. Remember, a garment is a cleave and it's makabal tumma. So, and it's sholish by sholish etzbos, even if it's small, if it's made out of a garment, it, 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 remember, since an ani can use it, right, it still has the status of a cleave. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't singe it yet. So it's still considered a kli as the Kabul Tuma, and therefore a madlikin ball. We're gonna see you're not madlik with it. Now this machloikas, which Rabbi Kiva is extremely complicated machloikas as to why they're arguing about this. So Bishmala Inyan Tuma Baha Pligi. They're arguing really whether the wick is makabal tum or not, whether it's tummy. The Rabbi Ezra sort of kipul ain't a moyen. That he holds that folding it does not remove it from the status of a cleaver. It remains what it was before. And therefore it's makabal tum. And we'll see why he doesn't want you to like it. That'll come later. And Rabbi Kiva saw a kipul moyo, ubetuli bokel. By folding it into a small wick like that, you basically it was mavatul it as a kli, and therefore it's not makabel tum. So fine, elayin had lokab my kli. Okay, so I understand one holds it, but why are they arguing as well whether you could be madlik with it or not? Right, Rabbi Yehuda said you're not madlik with it. And Rabbi Kiva, what does one have to do with the other? The fact that it's makabel tum or not makabel tum. So why is that totally the machloikas? Why does Rabbi Ezra hold you cannot be madlik with it? And Rabbi Kiva also it's very complicated how they get how they get. So on Rabbi Ezra, B'shem Rabbi Shimon Chinam Rabbi Barava. So here is a multiple machloikas going on. Hacha b'sholosh al sholosh mitzum tzamol saskina. We're dealing where this garment was exactly three by three. Not, not, not 3.5 by 3.5. It was exactly 3.3 metzumtzum, means exact. And we're dealing with not a regular Friday. We're talking about when Yontif falls on Friday. And Kula Alma Islud Rabbi Yehuda, and everybody holds of the din of Rabbi Yehuda Do Amar, Masikin Bekelim, the Ein Masikin Beshirikim. Rabbi Yehuda, remember, throughout Shabbos we have a, a, a machlokas between Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Shimon regarding Muktzah. 
Rabbi Yudah holds there is Moksa. Rabbi Shimon holds less slave Moksa. Therefore, if you have a Kli and you designate it for lighting with it, you can light with it, it's not Moksa, you can use it. But something, that, for example, if you have a Kli and it breaks on Yontif, and you didn't, you were, you were never making those shivre kalim. So midin muktzah, you can't use it to light anything with. So everybody holds of that. And kolah isla de ula, and both both Rabbi Yezra Rabbi Kiva holds of ula. That what's ula? That hamadlik tzar shiadlik berovayot say. So when you light the wick. You have to light it in the piece that's sticking out a little bit, that comes out of the candelabra. And Rabbi Yezer, Savar, Like we said before, folding it, it doesn't make we kept it as a kli. And we keep it the adlik bay porta. Now, once you light it a little bit, havili shever kli. You, this, you made it a shever kli, because it's not three by three anymore. It's like a broken kli. The chi komadlik with shever kli komadlik, and you're not allowed to be madlik with a shever kli because it's mukza. So that's why Rabbi Yezer holds you can't be madlik with it. Rabbi Kiva sover no kippel moil. You made it once you folded it erev yont. You know because remember you you Doesn't you did this before already before yontif. So by folding it, folding it alone was moil to remove it from a din kli. Vein tors kli ala. The chi komadlik beitz ba'almon komadlik. The fact that now you lit it didn't make a difference. It was it was not it was not a kli anymore. So that's why they argue regarding Hadlaka. So the, it's two independent machloikas, one are not calling the other. They argue regarding Tuma because of the way they, they hold about whether folding is moil or not. And they argue regarding Hadlaka or not because of this very detailed multiple machlokas regarding this issue. And Amr Av Yosef, that which the Baraisa said. There was a Baraisa floating around out there that said three by three mitzvah tzomos. And they never understood why they mentioned that, right? The lawyer done on my hill. We never know what's here. What, why did we have to be told three by three tzom tzomos? Now, when you come to Taras, Rabbi Barabba, Lady Rabbi Yudish, Mami, not Rabbi Yudish, fear like Comes out a bit because once if you lit it, it's coming out of the, you got a life that is not much, it's got to be, if it's three by three exactly, and once a little bit sticking out, you lit it, then it's not three by three anymore. Frank Gamoro, and therefore it's a Shevra Kli, and that explains this book as the Rabbi Ezra Biki. Frank Gamoro, Umi Amr, Ramada Baraba, Achi. How can we say this? Ramada Baraka couldn't say it because Amr, Ramada Baraka. No, I can't hear. Nochri Shechokat. Yes? Mario? The sound was gone for a minute. It's okay again. Okay. Nochri Shechokat Kav. The Bikas Yisrael. So let's say a, a Jew has a piece of wood, and a goy cuts out a receptacle of the piece of wood on Yontif. So you had one kli, and now it's been made into another kli. Yisrael Masika be Yontif. A Jew is allowed to light it on Yontif. Frank Gemara Vamai, Noi Ladu. This, if one of, we're to learn. As we get along in the Sech of Shabbos, the various parameters of muktza. We're going to have muktza machmes mius. Things are sometimes you can't touch an item on Shabbos because it's disgusting. An example, for example, we'll see is a, 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 a candelabra which gets wax all over it. it that's going to be muktza machmes mius. We're going to have we're going to see muktza machmes chisar on kiss. Uh, it's going to be muktza because it's a it's something that you use during chol. There's also a, a category of muktzah called noila, something that didn't exist before it obviously exists. For example, a beitzah, like an egg that's born, that's a classic case of noila. But even here, if all of a sudden a goy came around and made a new kli out of some kind of piece of wood you had, so it's noila. Now, why did they allow you to light it on your antif? If you hold muktzah noila, it must be because Ravada Barba doesn't hold it, it in muktzah. He doesn't hold like Rav Yehuda. We remember we said Kula Al Nai got we hold like Rav Yehuda building up that machloek as we had to say that everybody holds like Rav Yehuda regarding being stringent by muktzah. When we say Rav Shimon Lesle muktzah, he's like the din is he that they don't hold of this din of noyim. So ain't a chanami. 
is saying yes. Rabbi Kiva Rabbi Yezer held like that. I don't hold like that. We see that because you see the way he posked regarding Neumann. Okay. Gentlemen, tomorrow we're going to learn at, what do we do, at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock in the morning? How do we lose Friday morning? 8 was last week. We were doing 8. You want to do 9 is also good. No, for me, it's good for nine. Is not 9 not good? Mario, 9 is not good? 9, nine. is good for me. Mario, what yeah. do you say? I have to be, I'm working. So. Okay, so let's make 8 o'clock. Let's, o'clock. let's okay. keep it the way it was. Okay. All right. And let, let Penny, let, let Penny and Michael Summer know that we're learning tomorrow at 8 o'clock. I don't know if they can of be course. there, but let them know. Of course. Okay. Okay. Rabbi uh, Krauss is on at 9. If anybody wants to tune in at 8.45, in two minutes, Rabbi Krauss is starting. And what is Rabbi Krauss? Is he giving a Shabbos Agadol drasha? No, Debray no. Chizik for 15 minutes. Okay, could you, could you, could you, um, where, where is the Zoom number on that? On a video. Uh, Young or Israel sent out an email. If you want or anything, yeah, 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 I got you. it, I got it. I have it. It's okay, fun. we'll see you then. We'll Bye. see you then. Bye. All right. The most complicated thing. <laughs> and for a minute, you run belly, and they're like, oh, yeah. just, go, "Just go." What was that? Which one did my? I don't know what's going what on. I'm trying to end it. Uh, all right. <laughs>